What is going on, my friends? Hope everyone is doing well. Dan here, Walnut Ridge, and I'm bringing you a video today that's going to be all about things to consider when buying a used camper. So I'm gonna talk about, I did a video here not too long ago, if you didn't see it, go check it out, um, about things to look for when buying a new camper, or things to consider when buying a new camper. So now I thought, let's talk about buying used, which I'm over here in our used lot right now. I'm gonna go through these in no particular order on things you should look for and consider, like I said. I think the first thing that we're gonna jump into though is buying a camper from an individual, a private seller, versus buying it from a dealership. So, like I said, no particular order, let's just jump right into this. Here we are inside a Saber. I've never been in this one. Pretty cool layout. Uh, I love coming over here to the used and checking them out because you've got such uh, different layouts. Anyway, jumping right in. Like I said, no particular order, but one of the first things I can think of, and look, yes, I do work for a dealership, but I'm gonna give you pros and cons on both, okay? One of the first things I can think of uh, buying from a dealership as opposed to buying from a private seller is warranties and guarantees. I don't know about all RV dealerships, but I know here that our used campers go through an inspection process for safety concerns, and we also find any issues with the camper so we can point those out when you buy it. Some of them we actually fix, but in general, you can actually get warranties or they have warranties with them. As opposed to buying from a private seller, you actually don't know anything they're hiding. Not that people are hiding, I'm just saying. We've all kind of been there buying on Facebook Marketplace. Um, you don't know what they're hiding and they definitely don't have any warranties or guarantees. So that's one thing to consider, the difference between buying from an individual and buying from a dealership. As we walk around this Wildwood, I'll tell you number two, reason to consider buying from a dealership as opposed to an individual is reputation. Most RV dealerships, oh, this is a really cool bunk room, Mo huge. Most dealerships are certainly going to be concerned about their reputation, um, be it from word of mouth to other people, but also Google reviews, Yelp reviews, Facebook reviews. So they're going to be more apt to Certainly, I really like this bunk room. They're going to be more apt to disclosing to you any issues that the camper has. Or like I said in part one, fixing a lot of those issues because they certainly don't want their reputation to be ruined. Let's go ahead and finish this tour. I really like this camper. I love the layout. Okay, so there you go. We toured this one. On to the next thing. So the next thing that I'll say about buying from a dealership as opposed to an individual is selection. Like I said, I'm over here in the used section and it goes to about where that fork truck is right now. And then we've got a whole other row over there and we've got several back here. And I'm sure that most dealerships have quite a few used campers for you to choose from, which is super nice. It gives you an option to come out, tour different ones, or get on their website and tour different ones. Find one that you really, really love, and you're not settling for, um, and jump into it. So there you go. I don't even know what I'm standing in right now. Hold on, I'll be right back. This is a J-Flight 28BHBE, so we're in a travel trailer now. So the next thing I can think of would be finance options. When you buy from an individual, you're not getting any finance options. When you buy from an RV dealership, you're gonna have several finance options. I'll go ahead and piggyback right into this one. We'll just lump them together. And that would also be trade-in. Let's say that you have a used camper. You're looking to upgrade, modernize, trade up, whatever you wanna call it. Dealerships have the ability to take your trade in, give you cash for it, or money off of your next camper that you're buying, whereas you don't get that with a used individual. Not a used individual, an individual selling a used camper. There we go. So the last thing I can think of buying from a dealership as opposed to an individual, we'll do two together again, would be 
uh, advice and expertise. You would hope in most cases that the dealership that you're buying from has knowledgeable sales staff that can help you along, especially if it's your first camper. That's your hope. Um, they're going to be able to answer a lot of questions for you. They can do an orientation for you before you pick up your camper, especially again, if it's your first one. Tying into that expertise would also be the uh, assistance with paperwork and all the legal stuff. I've never bought a camper used from an individual. I've never bought a camper used from a dealership, but I would have to imagine much like buying a car, there's all kind of paperwork that goes with it. Maybe it's just as simple as signing a title over, I don't know. Uh, but you're gonna get that expert assistance and advice from the dealership. So there you go. Now we're gonna jump into the fun stuff, which is things you should look for when buying a used camper. And here we go. Again, no specific order. I do think these two are kind of the most important. So maybe these two are gonna be in a specific order, but the rest are not. This bed's really comfortable. Um, that is going to be one, oh, let's zoom out a little bit. One, what your vehicle can tow. It's very important to know that your tow vehicle can actually pull it before you buy it, especially if you buy it from an individual and you've got to get it off their property. Number two is your budget. Um, if you're buying from an individual, that's pretty easy. They want X amount of price for it. You can obviously talk them down lower. Um, there's less of a budget factor in there. If you're buying from a dealership, then you can look at financing, which is going to get you monthly payments. And you're going to be able to determine your budget for there. For instance, this is a KZ Escape. It's $22,995. So it's $225 a month. Kind of a cool little layout. I'll pan around to that comfy bed that I was just sitting on. So there you have it. So there's number one, budget and towability. Oh, while we're talking about number one, don't always just trust what somebody tells you the weight of the camper is. In most vehicles, you can go out and you can find a sticker like this, which does not tell our weight. There we go. Unloaded vehicle weight, 4,015 pounds. Usually there's a yellow sticker like this on the door or right here that's gonna tell you. If you can't find it on the camper, you can always look it up online, even older stuff. You'll have no problem finding it, but know your unlead, unloaded vehicle weight. I have another video about weight that you should watch, especially if you're a first timer, but know this. If your tow vehicle can tow 5,000 and the camper weighs 4,500, you're not in great shape because you're not taking into account all the stuff you're packing, your pets, your food, uh, your human bodies. These all need to be factors. That's why I always recommend getting a camper that's at least 1,000 pounds less than your max tow capability on your tow vehicle. Enough said on that. If you've got questions, drop them down below. I'll be happy to point you over to that other video or answer those questions for you. On to number two. So the next thing on my list of important things to consider when you're buying used is inspect it, inspect it, and then inspect it again, and then inspect it some more, especially for water damage. If a camper is not properly maintained. I've camped, my wife and I have camped for years and I need to knock on a piece of wood somewhere. I guess I'll do my head. We've not had any water damage issues, uh, nothing like that. We had a washer that leaked briefly. We caught it the same day, no big deal. However, if a camper is not properly maintained, you will get water damage or you will get water leaks that lead to water damage. So. If you have a camper like behind me here that has a ladder, typically, not always, typically a ladder on the back of the camper means that it's a fully walkable roof. Meaning you can get up there, you can sit up there, you can do whatever you want. It's structures for that. Some, you can get up there to do your maintenance, but you really shouldn't be up there long. And then ones without a ladder, they're meant for you to get up there with a ladder, inspect it, check it, be done. You're gonna wanna check all around the sides 
and make sure that you don't see any of that silicone loose, missing, old, cruddy, uh, because that's a good indicator of a leak. It's also a good idea, and you really should take your time, even if you're buying from an individual, you should take your time. Let me flip the camera around here. Can I? I don't see the button. Oh, well. You should take the time. Wow, I got really dark there. You should take the time and go around and look in all of your corners and make sure, feel around, make sure that everything feels nice and solid. You don't see any mold. You don't see any mildew. Um, everything feels solid. You should do that in all of your corners. I should get my hand out of the way. Every corner. Take a good look at the roof as a whole. And then in addition... You should be, man, I keep sticking my hand in the way, sorry. In addition, you should be, well, this is not going to work for me. Hold on. Nope, nope, my phone hates me today. There we go. You should take the time to walk around and really feel the floor. You're going to know if you hit a soft spot in your camper. So walk around, feel with your foot all of those corners and stuff to make sure everything feels nice and solid and sturdy. You're gonna wanna go into every nook and cranny, including you're gonna wanna go to all of your uh, air vents, your fans, your AC, which is right here behind me, and give everything a good check over and make sure there's no water damage. Now I'm gonna lump these next two together because to me, kinda like with the weight and budget, they just go together, like PB and J. Um, and that is going to be layout and amenities. And that's why I say having a selection is super nice. Uh, that camper that we were in earlier, the Wildwood, fifth wheel, had that huge bunkhouse. While I thought it was great, I don't need that kind of space. You get a travel trailer like this one that has bunks, I don't need bunks. My son is all grown up. So this isn't a good layout for me. I could utilize that space better. So think about the same thing I told you guys in buying new. Think about where you're going to go with the camper. Who all is going to be coming with you when you camp. Are you going to have it at a campground? Are you going to spend a lot of time there? Are you just going to take it out occasionally on the weekends? And wherever you go, you're going to be out doing mostly activities. How many kids are going with you? Do you have friends and family that like to go camping with you? These are all things to consider. As well as what amenities the camper has. Some campers have larger TVs. Some have two ACs. Some have recliners. Some have, wow, this is super comfortable. Um, some have larger kitchens. So if you want like a big, why are we zoomed in again? The struggle is real with the camera today, folks. I'm sorry. Uh, there's another great one right there. Fireplace. I love having a fireplace in my camper because we camp early in the season and we stay out late into the season. And it's such a nice feature because you're using the campgrounds electric. You're not using your propane and it definitely takes the chill out of it. So think about layout. Does it work for you and your family and your needs? And does it have all of the amenities or creature comforts you want? You know, a lot of people call this glamping. I'm fine with that. It is glamping. It's camping in style. I like to have all the stuff that I need with me when I'm camping. Uh, oh, another amenity. This is another good one. Queen bed versus full bed versus queen bed or did I say king bed um this is like a small queen maybe you have a king bed at home and there's absolutely no way a queen bed is going to work or another great for instance you do have some nook cranny cubbies over here so if one of you needs a CPAP machine you've got a place for it but that's another consideration when buying your unit is uh, sleeping at night, do you have a place for like CPAP machine or do you need your phone right there next to you? Um, what's another amenity I could think of? Oh, what it's rated for seasons wise. So <clears throat> if you plan on camping where it's really cold 
and you need a Four Seasons camper, that's something to consider. Or at least a camper with a heated and enclosed underbelly that's not necessarily rated Four Seasons. All things to consider. That's why earlier I told you it's really nice to be able to go to a dealership, walk out here on the lot like I'm doing now with your significant other or your family and just walk around and have all of those discussions. I will tell you this, and then I'm going to shut up on this point. You're probably not going to get everything right. I remember our second camper that my wife and I ever bought. We thought we knew exactly what we wanted because it was our second camper. We found what we wanted. We got it. We fell in love with it. Our first camping trip out and my wife says, where do we put the trash can? And I know that sounds really trivial, but she likes to have things neat and tidy. And she didn't feel like she had a proper place for the trash can. Now, that's not the reason we got rid of it. We just changed. Um, but it's something to consider. Like, all of those things are important. This is a rear kitchen model. I didn't know that when I walked into it. This is a rear kitchen model. So you're going to have a much larger kitchen in this than you are, say, a rear den model. All things to consider. And now I'm going to shut up. On to the next one. And it kind of goes back to the checking everything over for water damage. That is test everything. If you buy from a dealership, or at least I can speak to Walnut Ridge. If you buy from Walnut Ridge, we test all of the appliance and we test all of the safety features. So that would be your carbon monoxide detector. Um smoke detector, all that good stuff. But if you're buying from an individual, they haven't necessarily tested that. So you should do your due diligence. I'm zoomed in again. You should do your due diligence and check all of those features because better safe than sorry. Not to mention, who knows? I'm not sure the answer to this, okay? Oh. Talking about amenities from earlier, how about a central vac system? So being able to sweep without bringing your broom and your dustpan and all that stuff. Um, I'm not sure the answer to this, so I'm more posing it as a question. But let's say that this is an older unit and that version of the Furion stove is not made anymore. How easy is it to get parts for it? I don't know the answer to that. I know that in many cases, I know our parts department is really good. Uh, but as an individual, how much is that going to cost you? Uh, things to consider. Microwave, eh, you could probably just switch that out with a regular microwave. Fridge, freezer, that's going to be another thing to consider. Not a bad thing to ask an individual, plug the camper in, turn the fridge on before we come tomorrow. We want to make sure the fridge works. But like I said, I don't know where the carbon monoxide detector is in this one. It's a good thing to make sure all those systems work. Your... Um, your GF, was it GFS or GFC? Your grounded plugs in your bathroom. Another great thing to test and make sure that they work. Make sure that the water works if you have the opportunity. Anyway, you're getting the idea. There we go. Make sure all of these things work before you drive your camper off the lot or a person's yard. And the last thing I'm going to mention that I can think of, I'm sure I probably missed some things. But the last thing I'm going to mention is some campgrounds have rules on the age of the camper that you're bringing to their campground. More so for seasonal spots than overnight. I don't think they really care about overnight. But seasonal spots, sometimes they will say uh, the camper can only be, I don't know, less than 10 years old. So... If you have your heart set on a specific campground, make sure you know what their rules are and that the camper meets those rules. Because the last thing you want is to have your heart set on a specific campground. You find the perfect camper that you're just in love with, you buy the camper, and then you find out you can't put it at that campground. So that would kind of stink. Uh, so things to consider. So I'm going to wrap this up. It's getting ready to start raining on me. I just walked into this 2023 Reflection 337 RLS. I like this layout. Um, things to consider. 
I hope you enjoyed the video. If I miss something and you catch me on it, drop a comment down below. If you like the video, give it a thumbs up. Make sure to subscribe. And if you have any questions whatsoever about anything in this, you want me to go into more detail, leave a comment down below. I'd be happy to answer it for you. I hope you all have a fantastic, well, it's getting ready to be the weekend for me. So I hope everyone has a fantastic weekend. If you're getting ready to go camping, enjoy camping. If you're getting ready to buy a camper to go camping, good on you. Have a great day, everyone.